Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Rosie Recap. Today is a super special day because we are talking to Brent Champagne from Big Brother Season 23. Thank you so much for coming to talk to us, Brent. Thank you so much for having me, guys. I appreciate you guys reaching out. Yeah, we're super excited to um, get to hear about your experience and everything that went on in the house. We're uh, big fans of the show. Yeah, it's a, it was a wild experience. Sensory overload. A lot of people, oh, you know, when they spectate but then actually play, it's two different worlds. So I, I can't wait to you know bring it to light to you guys. Yeah, I've always I've always wanted to go on Big Brother like my whole life. So I'm I'm super excited to like hear how it was for you. Yeah, <laughs> I mean honestly, it was more of something that I saw in season halfway through season nineteen. I saw a couple episodes. I was like, wow, I think I would uh, do really well at this show. Um, I am going to make it my mission to get on and, uh, here I am. That's awesome. So it only took you a few years really. To get yeah, so I, I, yeah. I applied season 20, made it to the semifinals. Unfortunately, I didn't fit, um, the type of season they were trying to put together. It was more like technology based. My career wasn't, uh, what they wanted. They went with Brett instead. Oh, okay. You know, who was the, the cybersecurity, uh, analyst. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, everything happens for a reason. And then I took some uh, years to just travel and do some things I've always wanted to do. And then legit, I was like, well, you know what? Last moment, let me just put an application for BB23. Uh, halfway through the audition process, I ended up getting recruited at the same time as applying. So mm-hmm. I got the best of both worlds a little bit. Oh, cool. Yeah. So you were... So you were reaching out to them and they also at the same time reached out to you. So yeah, it was weird. Yeah, they hit me up through my uh, my Instagram. So that is pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. So yeah, so basically what I just want to do, I wanted to like start night one in the house and then just to get your view on everything up until week three. Um, so I'm going to go back to the first night. Uh, you are in the third group to enter the house, right? And there were three guys that were with you. You, you had Kylan, Derek X, and Christian. And so, like, right off the bat, what were, like, your first impressions of these three guys? Like, what did you think about them when you first saw them? So, this is the funny thing, man. We have a lot of handlers throughout the whole show. So, we mm-hmm. have a lot of people that are our age, you know, taking care of everything, talking mm-hmm. to everyone that needs to be talked to, getting us all the stuff we need to get. And we're walking out of our holding rooms that they had before the show. And there's these three gentlemen in front of me, but I thought they were just more or less, like, my security in a sense. Or they just... <laughs> Everyone was six feet apart. They didn't want anyone talking to us. Um, they were just making sure, you know, no contact for the whole COVID protocol. Mm. And then we'd get to the studio and there's uh, four X's on the ground on the concrete before we get into the studio. And next thing I know, I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, oh my bad. I didn't mean to. I, didn't mean to no, you're good. Um, I was like, I was like, oh, crap. These are my castmates. These are the people that I'm going to be living with. Now, they gave us explicit dis- uh, um, direction to not talk to each other. They were like, mm. you know, talk to each other. You cannot have any type of competitive edge by getting to know each other. The first thing <laughs> Derek X does after he hears this, it starts to try to talk to us and get to know us. And he just <laughs> yelled at like three times. And me, Christian, and Kylan are just looking at him like, bro, they just told you not to talk. And you're over here asking them where we're from. It was pretty funny. But as soon as we got on, um, you know, they were like, go time, get into the studio get on your markers, you're seeing, you're seeing Jewel, right? This goddess, this icon, if you will. And she's there in the flesh. Lights are beaming down on her. All the, you know, camera crew and everyone's just going all, doing their thing. Everything's fast paced, uh, getting ready because it's a live show. Mm-hmm. So I'm standing next to the three other gentlemen, looking at them, trying to take everything in. We still have our masks on. We take them off. Then I get to actually see their faces. I'm looking at Jewel. We're live. Bam, it was just sensory overload because the next thing I know is they're like, okay, well, Jewel gives us direction to go into the backyard after we go into the house. Now I'm looking at this brand new house, right? Mm-hmm. This thing that everyone's, you know, always dreamt about living in. So I just met Jewel, just met through three of my castmates, run through the house because there's no more time for us to really like look around, get to the backyard. I have people screaming up top. I didn't know their other castmates. And then bam, we're on our markers. All right, go do the, do the puzzle. I don't even remember the puzzle. That's how, like, <laughs> that's how much it was like just trying to like take everything in. Yeah, I can imagine. It ha- must be like just like overload everywhere. Yeah. Uh, what is like, the, how much different does the house look like when you walk in based on like compared to on the show? It looks huge on the show. Yeah. 
Now, granted, it's high ceilings, right? Because it's the mm-hmm. studio, it's the sound stage we have an upstairs, but it's not as big as you think it is. You can hear everything. You know where everyone is. You can, um, you know, it's it's well designed and it's surreal to have all those decorations and everything. They do a really good job of kind of making everything seem kind of subtle, as far as all the cameras everywhere and the lights. Um, by distracting you with shiny objects, right? You have all these mm-hmm. different knickknacks hanging up on the walls and stuff. So it is, you do feel comfortable. I will say that. But as far as a house overall, it's not as big as you would think it is. And mm-hmm. you can't really escape anyone. Kind of the point, you know, to build tension, and to make you guys have to communicate with each other. No one can really hide. You really need to try to hide. Like I used to hide underneath some of the pillows just to get in like a nap in. So the cameras couldn't see me. But other than that, um, everyone knows where you are all the time. You can hear everything because there's no doors besides the three bedrooms. And even those are right near each other. So, yeah, yeah. Wow. that's fine. I think, I think I actually saw a clip on YouTube. of I think it was Kylan and Tiffany talking. And I think it was like Sarah Beth or someone was sleeping under her pillows. And she, they had no idea she was even there. Was that's so funny. Oh, that's <laughs> Alyssa, that's yeah. And they were talking about the cookout. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> if only she would have been awake. <laughs> I think she was. I think she was awake. Yeah, I oh, think really? she, I think she, yeah, she like just rabbit. couldn't say anything about it. I, I, I remember oh. her being awake. Uh, someone told me she was awake, heard everything about it, and just could, obviously couldn't bring it to the attention because if she did, she would have been a target even more than she was already going to be. Oh. Yeah, at that point it was like... You can't, yeah, you can't say anything about it. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I feel like that's how, that's how it was for a lot of people, I bet. <clears throat> Well, because as soon as anyone started to catch on to that secret alliance, they would get mm-hmm. rid of them. I mean, made yeah, sense. for sure. You know, as yeah, soon as yeah. I caught on to why Xavier wouldn't uh, nominate uh, Aza, when I was saying, listen, we have a narrative of this all girl alliance. So stick with it. We can only use it for one more week. Um, you know, you put up Brittany, take away one of the votes by putting up Aza. It just made the most sense, you know, mm-hmm. after we just formed mm-hmm. an alliance called the Radicals two days prior. And he proceeded to tell me that, you know, they had history, they had a connection, they're good friends, he wouldn't nominate her, but yet he was nominating me, who was on his team, I mean, mm-hmm. in the alliance, with, uh, you know, with my team and his team working together. I It just didn't make sense to me. And then I went to downstairs to talk to Hannah about it. Hannah got upset. And then I found out later, obviously, after I got out of the house, that Hannah went and ran to Xavier, told him that I was sniffing around. And then mm. Xavier was like, okay, now we got to get rid of him. Because Xavier didn't want to get rid of me initially. Either did Kylan or Big D. It was Tiffany, Hannah, and Whitney that really. Um, yes, yes. I remember because yeah. Tiffany, Tiffany was the one who said that you were like, it was like you, thing. Whitney, and um, French, mm-hmm. you were like the, the three-headed monster or whatever in the house. Yeah. Did you so it wasn't like, even them. Did you feel like that you were that you were like the head like controlling the house with Frenchie and Whitney, or was that just something that people were saying about you? So I did have a decent amount of input week one, just because mm-hmm. I was able to uh, build a bond with Frenchie, right? The very first HOH is important. Um, it also is something that's very scary. A lot of people don't want it. Um, but I do think historically, um, I think the odds are that a lot of the people that end up winning the first HOH actually make it pretty far. Yeah. Uh, just because you have to force those people to try to kiss up to you, make alliances with you. It's just you're in the bittersweet of either the, the best or the worst position being yeah. the first HOH. And I unfortunately got tangled in the mess because I was trying to be in the good graces of Frenchie was looking for a meathead. There wasn't mm-hmm. many meatheads left besides me and Travis towards the end because everyone kept getting safe with the wild card competition and Xavier and um, uh, Christian ended up being safe from that. And then you had yeah. the, you know, the veto cop and Derek X got off of the, you know, won that and got off the, the block as well. Kylan just got taken down because of that. there was legit no one left besides me and Travis. So I had to kind of say and do everything I possibly could to not sketch out. Um, Frenchie because his paranoia started to kick in because he oh, yeah. too many different targets and he couldn't he couldn't land one you know and then ultimately he had to put up Travis who he grew fond of after we nominated him yeah but I was only you know considered a head of a snake because I had to just stay in Frenchie's good graces yeah and I had to stay and do it everything I could because I was still an option when right. there's no more left. So mm. that gets a little uncomfortable when you realize 
They're like, okay, there's no one else left besides me and one other guy. <laughs> I got to make sure that other guy doesn't out, uh, you know, relationship me with friendship. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. So going back to that first, like, night, that first competition, once everyone competed for the HOH, Julie announces that there's going to be this team twist. So when you heard about this, like, what was kind of your initial reaction to that? And did that change, like, your strategy going in and how you had prepared initially? It screwed me, quite frankly. <laughs> uh, my buddies yeah. are huge fans. Like I said, when I started watching yeah. it, it was with them. And they're huge fans. And they tried to prep me as much as possible, except that one thing. That's the one they didn't mm-hmm. talk about. And I, didn't, I haven't watched the show enough to know there could be teams. Mm-hmm. So when they said there was teams, I was like, oh, that's new. you know. But it wasn't new. Uh, it's tough when you're trying to plan for an individual game, right? Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden you have three more people attached to your individual game. Now you have to worry about other people's feelings, emotions, uh, what their opinion, their gameplay strategies. Now you have to try to like make it all work together right. without really having much of a choice, right? Whitney got to pick, but she only got to pick out of two people. You know, whoever was on the monitor, that's who she got to pick. It's not mm-hmm. like she got to just pick out of all the lot of guys. It was just the yeah. two the production gave her. So it's tough because I think they did it for multiple reasons. I think they gave one person that was going to work well with the team and then the one that doesn't, right? Because they cast mm-hmm. us to have opposing and complementary personality traits. Yeah. I would, if in a, in a perfect world, I would never have worked with Hannah or Whitney just because our ideals, beliefs, and everything else is just so different from each other. So mm-hmm. we spent a good amount of time disagreeing with each other and arguing with each other that we did actually working together. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to play a lot of game because my game was in jeopardy right off the bat. When Frenchie first saw me, that was it. He's like, we're getting rid of a meathead. This guy fits the idea. That, like right from the horse's mouth, that's what he said. Yeah. So I was in defense mode right out the gate. Now the other three on my team weren't really because they weren't being targeted. And right. Derek X was for a little bit. So he, he got to taste it, but he be- came safe by winning that veto competition. For me, I had to play a lot more game and a lot more of like a selfish game because I knew I was more at Jeopardy than any of them. So it it rubbed them the wrong way because they thought I was just trying to step on the captain's toes, which was Whitney, um, that I was just trying to play, you know, and do everything that I wanted to do. It wasn't the case at all. It was more or less, I'm the only one really in trouble. And no one really is campaigning for me besides myself. And now I obviously know everyone was campaigning for the opposite to evict me. Um, so I yeah. was kind of right with my gut feeling on that. Yeah. But yeah. It was, it just made for a little bit of a, a harder, um, you know, first three weeks having teams, but I am proud that I was able to make it three weeks. Right. Because yeah. I was targeted the first week and I was yeah. able to at least be able to get myself off the block um, or potentially off the block and then uh, make it to three weeks. So if it wasn't for my team campaigning to get rid of me, I don't think uh, Xavier and me were good friends. We had a great rapport and we, you know, he didn't want to get rid of me. Like I said earlier, I do think the, the aces, my team were the only ones that could really give the Kings a run for their money. Mm-hmm. I think we the, the other stronger team that had the numbers, but also had the competitors as well that matched it. And I don't think that the Kings would have took a shot at us just because if they were unsuccessful, we were the only ones that can actually ruin their day. Um, I do think Hannah and Whitney going up to Xavier with the silver platter saying, Hey, you have our, you know, support on eliminating Brent. How does Xavier say no to that? Because mm-hmm. now he can get rid of a potential player that could, you know, do well later on. But also he has the, the, the blessing from the people on his team. So they're not going to get yeah. mad at him. There's no blood on his hands, hypothetically. You know, it's legit the perfect scenario. So I don't blame him for actually, you know, going through with it after Hannah, uh, Whitney, and I'm pretty sure Derek X. We're all like, yeah, we'll, we'll vote him out. <laughs> Yeah, you know, how do you say no to that? <laughs> yeah, like honestly, you were you were set up 
really well in the very first week. It was when Frenchie started to go off the deep end, the deep end that really messed you up. Like, yeah, I went like in the very first weeks, I had you like really high, like on my like on my hit list because I didn't think anyone was gonna come for you. Yeah, no, you were because because you because you were able to convince Frenchie to mm -hmm. make take you take you off the table and you became kind of like his right hand man in a way. So mm -hmm. I thought you did a really good job at like at winning him over. Um, did you so you did have a gut feeling that you were gonna be a target that first week? Is that why you had, you felt like you needed to go up to Frenchie to uh try to get you to not be on his radar? Yeah, so historically within the game, it's always been a lot of the the meatheads, if you will, that's what everyone likes to call us, is usually the ones that make it pretty decently far, um, just because you either use as a shield or they're able to win competitions, but they're also able to, you know, um, build somewhat of a bond with other meatheads. And I wanted to go in um, – staying away from that narrative as far as just picking the easy route and me, Travis, Christian, Der I mean, think about it, Derek X, Xavier, if we all made an alliance, you're not winning. Like we're going to win everything. Like yeah. they did, you know, Christian won everything, Xavier won everything. Uh, a lot of those meatheads were winning all the competitions, but I didn't really want to do that. You know, I wanted to build um, alliances based off of connections and trust and loyalty and respect not necessarily just muscle and, you know, hoping for the best with having more physical than memory comps. Um, but Janelle tweeted uh, a tweet before they released the cast. And I don't know if you guys saw it, but it was basically saying, you know, go after the first cocky jock and eliminate him. And then, you know, set the tone for the rest of the, the season and keep doing that. I, 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 we messaged a little bit after the show and I was like, oh, you did me dirty because, you know, put that in everyone's head. But <laughs> uh, a lot of people just want to see a lot of the meatheads go home first. Yeah. So I knew going in that that was something I was going to have to like watch out for. I wanted to play a more reserved and quiet and in the shadow type of game. Um, all I wanted to do was observe people the, the whole like first three weeks. Um, but unfortunately, second day, I'm up in Frenchie's room and he's saying that he has me as a potential nomination. And I was like, uh, you know, I'm not surprised. That sucks. I kind of knew this was coming because his reasoning for it before he wanted to tell me that he stereotyped me was that I didn't linger in the HOH room after he won his HOH. I went up there for about 10 minutes, obviously saw the pictures of his family and everything, but I have been in his position where you're, you know, overwhelmed, you're tired, you're, you, you know, you, you just want to see photos of your family and you're feeling all types of different ways right now. All you want to do is just be by yourself and reflect. And I could see a lot of people overstating their welcome and I didn't want to be one of those people. So mm -hmm. when he, uh, you know, was talking earlier before we saw his HOH room, he was saying how he wasn't a night owl, how he likes to wake up early, how he just likes to be alone. Those are the things that I was going in with my original gameplay of just observing you know, and I was giving him the respect that I thought he deserved. And other people were just trying to kiss his ass to try to get mm -hmm. off the block, you know, and not be a potential nomination. So unfortunately, he took it as the opposite, where I was just dodging him, brings me up, we have the conversation, I explain myself, we end up, you know, uh, connecting on the whole loss of loved one conversation, as you guys saw a little bit of. Uh, ended up hugging out twice and then actually became a final two like a day later. So uh, it happens fast, but at the same time, yeah, the, you know, since day one, I had to abandon everything that I wanted to do originally and just, you know, scratch and claw, <laughs> do whatever I could to not go home. Yeah. I honestly feel like if you would have made it through the team thing, I think you would have done really well because you are, I think you are better off as a, like a solo kind of in the shadows person. And I think the team thing, it helped out lots of people, but also screwed people like you. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 People, people like, like people yeah. like Aza and Derek F like they, I think that benefited them, their game being in for the sure. team. But for people like you, that kind of just mess you up. <laughs> it, it's yeah. It's unfortunate. I would love to get a second chance at playing the game. I hope they, um, you know, production was very excited about me and i know they probably said it about everyone else but they mm -hmm. were excited because they they picked these players because they know like okay we can we can see that they can offer a lot to the game and like travis for example i mean the man didn't even get to do anything you know yeah. the first week 
Yeah. We didn't even get to see him do absolutely anything. Yeah. So it's like for those players, they kind of deserve to be able to maybe get a second shot so you could see, you know, what they could do, especially if there's no teams involved because the team yeah. really does throw everything for a loop. Because yeah. you look at our final four right now, you know, two of them mm-hmm. wouldn't be there if it wasn't for their, team. uh, their teams. Yeah. You know? I've been saying for years, they should do a season where it's all the people who got voted out like in the first like two weeks to come back. That'd be pretty cool. That'd be pretty That'd cool. Be cool. That'd like be pretty big cool brothers, like no one chance. would know what to expect. I know. haven't seen yeah. them do anything. You know? Yeah. They're basically like brand new house guests, except they have been on the show before. So it, yeah. It, it, and like, cool. and also too, mix and slop, man. I mean, I was on slop second week and I had two memory comps that week, I think. It's tough, man. You're not eating and you're taking cold showers and you're barely sleeping as it is because you're so excited. But also at the same time, like everyone's talking and staying up till 6 a.m. They mm-hmm. force you to wake up at 10 a.m. And then they don't mm-hmm. allow you to go to bed until 10 p.m. But no one ever, you know, you have so much caffeine to try to keep you up throughout the day. You get a second win. It's it's harder to like people think that the, the, the game is very easy. But when you're competing, like, uh, like one of the memory comps I had to do was the, the wild card comp, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm racing against two other people that just do it the fastest. It doesn't matter if it's right. It has to be the, the fastest, like, answer. And you're on slop, and you you barely can think about anything going on in the first place. And then, you know, mixed in with looking at these images, and you're just hoping that the last thing you looked at is the question that's going to come up because you're trying to take in so much information. Um, but you're also deprived, uh, deprived from, you know, not sleeping, cold showers and <laughs> eating yeah. steel oats for a week straight. <laughs> it's, it's cool because it adds a balance to the game. And it really does, you know, if you get the, the right person, the right team on slop throughout a crucial week, like, like the wall comp, that can really change the whole game, you know, because they're weaker and they're not feeling as well. And, you know, so... It is a cool aspect of the game, but unfortunately, I got it so early. Yeah. yeah, so like the first, like the like the like the really old seasons of Big Brother, they had a it was the, like slop was like a huge aspect of the game, mm-hmm. and they actually like they would show it like, like they would bring it up a lot in the episodes. I wish they would put more focus on it in the episodes like they used to because I think it is, I think it does have a huge impact in the game that people would kind of forget about because they don't really show it, you know. Yeah, like yeah. you don't. Yeah, you really don't feel like doing much, and you're always tired, and you don't even feel like taking a shower because it's it's freezing yeah you know what i mean Ugh, it's like it's yeah. the worst, <laughs> that would be the worst yeah. part is the cold showers i think yeah but, yeah um so just mixed with all of that and then when you wake up it's like you just know you can't eat anything besides slop yeah it's like you just woke up barely sleeping at all and then you're like oh i would love to eat something that has like to, to bring up my spirits nope steal oats again <laughs> <laughs> i don't think no. i could do that i think i would but just I did leave. get the full experience that's what i loved about uh, it i did my three weeks i did get the full experience um you know i got back stacked blindsided i talked really my, my way down i made alliances i made yeah. big alliances i had slop i was able to compete a few times um uh you know it's unfortunate because uh i'm a huge competitor and my athletic athletic ability is like my god-given talent i truly believe and it's just unfortunate because when you have 16 players in the beginning, you don't really get many competitions that have to do with anything besides luck and or just guessing and memory comps, mm-hmm. um, which was kind of like upsetting. I was so excited to have that bowl of Rama, but I didn't know you would spin in it. And oh, I get yeah. severely motion sickness. So as you can see, I, I puked on live TV. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> they only showed a little bit of it, thank God. But like, yeah, I was, you know. I tried. I don't know how some of those people, I don't know how Whitney and Big D and Christian were able to go for so long because Whitney and Big D's went off or they timed out. They yep. were spinning and spinning and spinning for 10 minutes straight. Oh no. And you're doing the 15 spins and little and like less than like 15 seconds. It's wild. And I couldn't keep anything down after the second time going with Xavier, but uh. It's once you get to like 10 players, all those competitions are all like timed and you're running. And like, I wish I was able to make it to that. Yeah. But um, no one would have ever suspected the cookout. So I would have been eliminated regardless. Oh. Yeah. Right. So were you really mad when you found out that um, basically everyone in the house was turning against you and trying to blindside you? So it wasn't more or less that I was mad because I, 
I did know what I was signing myself up for, right? Mm -hmm. I wasn't trying to find love. I wasn't trying to, you know, uh, find out about myself. It's a game that you're just like, listen, you want to sign up, be locked in with people they just met, sleep with them, eat with them, legit, um, 24-7, have to talk to them. They're going to try to lie to your face about the smallest things from their jobs and names and, Mm -hmm. you know, what they do to the biggest things as far as, like, they're about to just blindside you the next day like I signed up for that right I legit signed a piece of paper saying let's let's do it (laughs) (laughs) so for me to get upset with people having an opportunity to get rid of me um I couldn't really be upset with that I know a lot of people have mixed feelings and everyone wanted me to be like so this is the thing right I was just having this conversation yesterday I heard my edit on week three was pretty rough right to say yeah (laughs) And unfortunately, that's not really truly who I am. It was more or less everyone flipped on me. They needed to fill a villain role. I signed that away too. They can portray me any way they want. Mm -hmm. So by all means, I think what really messed up a lot of people um, as far as why they were so disappointed is that the edit they saw of me that week wasn't truly me. And then everyone was like, oh, this guy's going to lose his shit once he gets blindsided. But like, you were going to see the real me live. Yeah. So it was more or less, they, they, they built this narrative and you know, cut it all up. It was like, okay, this is what we're gonna show that week. Ratings were through the roof. Everyone was excited to see me get blindsided, but they kind of screwed themselves because they edited it, uh, the, not the real me yeah. kind of thing. And then everyone was like, oh my God, he, was, he took it so well and he, you know, wasn't you know an asshole about it and <laughs> that's because that's the real me you were seeing the real me that wasn't getting all cut up and trigger yeah. words and putting this <laughs> in and that and different facial expressions it's like uh you know I'm many things but I don't really think of myself as arrogant I'm very confident I would say um and it can be confused I don't really believe I think kindness is free I don't really believe in just uh putting people down and all that for no apparent reason um, you know, yeah, we were on slop and when we were sleeping and we slip up on things, right? Like you'll say something stupid and then they'll be like, oh, we're putting that in. That's great. Yeah. It's funny. It's, it gets a laugh, but it's not really, you know, us, right? right. I'm having this conversation with you guys right now. I haven't really yeah. said anything stupid, right? <laughs> we're just, no. you know, I'm well rested and have water and food in my stomach. Um, it's the things that people overlook that are yeah. like that. And um I a lot of people asked me when I was doing all publications afterwards and such they were like you know uh were you just saving face were you just uh you know swallowing your pride and your ego to just make it look like you were I was like to be honest if it was me and Brittany up there and I was another house guest of course it would get rid of me like Mm -hmm. why would I not why would I get rid of Brittany you know yeah I I I remember when we were watching it and when you got evicted, we were like, oh, he's going to be so blindsided. And then you didn't have much of a reaction. We're like, did he know? Like, we were so confused because, you know, the edit going up made it look like you were going to be like super blindsided. And you just walked down and you're like, oh, well. (laughs) So the thing was, when I was talking into the cameras a lot, I was saying to the the cameras, and I don't know if they, I didn't watch it because I just didn't want to watch it. I heard it was pretty rough. But, um, I would say to the cameras, if everything goes according to plan, I should have the votes. I should. So if they weren't showing the first part of that sentence, it just makes me look like I'm a cocky, you know, jock, right? Oh, I have the votes, but they're not showing, oh, if everything goes to plan, I should have the votes. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right. It's like very two different types of way you can interpret that by the splicing of that sentence. You know, yeah. you don't add the first part. I just look cocky. If yeah. you add the first part, it's like, okay, this guy's wishfully thinking that he might be able to have a chance. Mm-hmm. So that's important that a lot of people, like I said, if you don't have any type of media literacy or like um, reality TV literacy, you're going to take it so, um, you know, right. you're just going to take it as for what you're being shown. And it's a little naive of people, but there's a lot more to it and a lot more to what we said. And they have to just put it all into a 30 minute episode, an hour episode, two hour episode, wherever, mm-hmm. uh, how long it, they want it to be. Um, But to elaborate on what you were asking me about, as far as I knew, a lot of people keep thinking that people gave it away. I was in two um, big alliances, Mm -hmm. the Radicals, which were the Kings and the Aces, Aces being my team, 
And then I was also in the Mafia, which were the Aces and the Queens. Now, as a last ditch effort, I just built a, an alliance two days prior with the Radicals before Xavier nominated me. I had the votes if the Mafia stayed true. What I wanted the Mafia to do was to go up there, and this was at the, the, the foosball table. I was like, Kylan, if you go up to the Kings, which the Kings weren't supposed to know I was working with the Queens, mm -hmm. and you go up there and propose, don't use the veto, keep the nominations the same, we will willingly vote out uh, Brent. This did two things for me. This allowed me to see if Xavier would take the bait and if the Kings were going to betray me, which they did. Mm -hmm. It would al allow me to see if Alyssa was really truly my ally and she comes back and tells me what she heard, what she did. And then Kylan also doesn't have to worry about the veto being used and other people going up as a nomination and we can keep everything the same. He doesn't have to worry about losing his teammates, his uh, potential um, uh, nominee. So it just worked kind of like for everyone, but mostly for me in a perfect world. But I already knew the Kings were going, already took the deal. So I already knew they were going to be trying to vote me out. Christian slipped up, but it didn't matter that he slipped up because I already knew he was going to vote against me, right? He said the women are voting out three, they already got rid of three men the very first three weeks. And this was before I was even gone. I was like, whoa, it's like, I'm still here, <laughs> you know? And he was like, oh, you know, I didn't mean to say that, but it didn't matter. I already knew that they accepted the agreement from Kylan. So I already knew they were no good. Right. The only way I'm getting those votes is if the mafia stayed true. That's what I was hoping for. Yeah. You know what I mean? So Christian never gave it away. Big D, I knew was not gonna not vote for Britney. Right. So everyone was like, oh, Big D told him that he doesn't have the votes. Of course, Big D is gonna say that I don't have the votes because he already knows that he's not him and Oz are not not gonna vote for right. Britney. Britney. And I already know that Oz is working with Xavier because Xavier, you know, had him, uh, didn't put up Oz when he was supposed to. So mm -hmm. it wasn't like anything, you know, anyone gave it away. The pieces just fit together and it's like, okay, it's not looking too good, yeah. you know? Yeah. But I'm a, a guy that likes to put words into the, you know, I'm, I'm like, affirmations are everything, mm -hmm. law of attraction. So I just, I'll just say it and keep saying it and put it out into the world and the universe. And that's what you guys saw on the cameras. Like, I'm hoping, I, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I got the vote, so let's do it. I'm gonna stay. But everyone obviously took it as, oh, this dude's just so over cocky and overconfident and he thinks he has the votes and he's an idiot, he's oblivious. I guess, yeah. think whatever you wanna think, but I was in the house, so. Yeah, exactly. Well, the edit the edit did not do any favors because it definitely made it look like that you were saying you're so cocky that you, yeah. that you don't want the video to be used because you think that everyone would just vote out Britney. Well, the thing was, is I told them because I was asked if I wanted the veto to be used. I wanted to win the veto. I was like, honestly, I would love to win the veto because I like to compete. But at the same time, if I don't win the veto, I'm not going to be upset because I should have the votes. Mm -hmm. And if I don't have the votes, at least I know where the numbers lie and my team can go off of that information it was going to be to me it was like if i stay this week i'm going home next week it doesn't really matter yeah uh, if once a target always a target that's just how it keeps working you just keep getting put up and then because mm -hmm. it's the easiest person to attack yeah. who's already been you know but um uh targeted so to me it was just like and i don't again i don't know what they showed as far as a dr session but i was like yeah i'd love to win it but if i don't win it i get the information Numbers don't lie, People's, people do, and then my team will be able to go off of that base if I get eliminated. I was actually all about my team. I was like so loyal, <laughs> I really was. Like I was all about my, my team, like making as far as possible. And the whole time they were against me, which is unfortunate because I think they got rid of me too early because there was still, still two or three more weeks we didn't really know of team play that I could have yeah. helped to keep them all safe. I did say, and I went on record, um, and I don't know if they showed this or not too. I told them, I was like, if I go home, they're just gonna pick the rest of us apart. It makes the most sense because we're the only one that can really compete competitively as far as like physically, I thought personally. We had the Vito uh, King, yeah. and then we had also Whitney and Hannah. Hannah's a memory copy and a super fan. Mm -hmm. 
and Whitney had potential. So I was like, it just makes the most sense if I'm the Kings to just keep picking us apart because yeah. I didn't really see the any of the other two teams as a threat. And then bam, Whitney goes up the next week with Hannah. Whitney goes home. Derek X didn't win that wall comp. It would have been Derek X and Hannah and then Derek yeah. X would have went home. It just was happening exactly how I thought it should have went if I were the Kings. Right. You know? So Xavier throwing that competition to Derek X was by far, you know, obviously the stupidest thing he could have done because dude, just win it. Keep the the power to make it the jury. So your whole team's in jury. You gave Derek X an opportunity and he backdoored your teammate, you know, before jury, and there goes a jury vote. I don't I don't know. I didn't really see the logic in that because he was worried about having too much power. But the Kings had the power the whole legit first three, four weeks. It was insane. Yeah. We're winning everything, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. So when you say that that like they were gonna pick you off, are you just talking about like the other teams? Or, or did you expect that the Jews just was a big alliance that was just the Kings in general, because they were the only other four person team and we yeah. were a four person team. Now if they took a stab at us, I don't think Xavier would have done it if he didn't have the blessing of my team, because if he missed now, he has the, the, the second strongest team coming after him. Yeah. So it just didn't make sense unless he had the blessing of my team, which now seeing that I, now I understand why he did it. Um, because if he wasn't successful, like I said, it would just been a, a war between the Kings and the aces after we just built an alliance together. Now, again, he was trying to keep to the whole pawn narrative. And I'm like, guys, as soon as he said it, as soon as he opened his mouth about, Oh, you're going to go up. I was like, dude, there is no way. In what world am I a goddamn pawn against Brittany? I mean, like I was like, the whole house is going to vote me out. I said that right to his face. And hey, the whole house voted me out. So yeah, so I I like that about you too because a lot of times a big brother when someone asks someone to be a pawn they're like uh I don't I mean I guess I can but you were absolutely, like no I was I'm absolutely not, not. Yeah, yeah I remember that I was yeah, like, nope. as soon as he opened around. his mouth yeah I was like if yeah. you do this man you have it. I gave him an ultimatum I'm like if you do this you know my team's ever going to trust you again the radicals radicals are going to be over I was like but if you don't nominate me I will pretend this never happened and I wanted to say this to my team mm-hmm. you still put me up anyway. Yeah. And I was pretty much a man of my word, um, as much as I could be, you know, instead of lying, I was always redirecting and, you know, being a little bit more vague about it. But I really did feel as though in a game of so much lying that telling the truth was actually kind of powerful because it saved me a few times. It yeah. really did because other people's stories matched mine. And that was able to allow people like Kyland and Frenchie the first two weeks to trust me. And I thought that was powerful in the world in a game that everyone's just like saying whatever they can to, yeah. you know, and you know, Travis and everyone, like their testament to me where they, Travis came up to me the night before and he was like, dude, do, do I have the votes? He was like, I talked to four other people and they told me what I wanted to hear, but he's like, I know you'll tell me what I don't want to hear. And I was like, Trav, you don't have the votes. There's no way you're staying. I was like, mm-hmm. I'd be unbelievably surprised if you even get one vote. And he ended up getting two, um, which threw everyone for a loop because it kind of looked like they were framing me and Derek X because me and Derek X hung out with him like every moment after he was nominated. So that kind of started a whole new thing. And again, I don't really know what they showed in the show, but um, yeah, it was, I don't know. It was, everything was all over the place. It was a whirlwind. And um, the first few I, weeks were really like crazy. Like it was crazy. Some of the best like first couple of weeks in Big Brother history. I feel like. Yeah, that's yeah. what I heard. Like that's what we we figured because we were trending and everything. Yeah, Frenchie. A bunch of YouTube people were saying how Frenchie had one of the worst first HOHs like ever. Because like you said, every single target he tried to get, it just he went up to half the house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, had, he had half the house's enemies before he even got yep. the second week. Yep, you, yeah. watch, you watch BB19, that's the exact same thing that happened to Cody on that season. It's like he because he went off right out the gate, made too many promises. He didn't want to, mm-hmm. he didn't want to nominate anyone of color and he didn't want to nominate a, a female. Mm-hmm. And his first two nominations, yeah, <laughs> Island, Island, Alyssa, right? and Alyssa. yeah, yeah, <laughs> and everyone was like, What the heck? And yeah, you know, it was just, I don't know, it was that's- funny. And um, he didn't, you know, he really didn't have any other choices, to be honest. So, yeah, See, know. that's a case where you don't want to win first HOH. <laughs> yeah, you just got to not make promises. And he and he you know he did some pretty good things that I don't think people realize that. I mean, 
uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but he did pin me and Christian against each other the very first couple of days by saying that I was talking about Christian and Christian was talking about me. That's brilliant. Mm -hmm. You know, get two guys that, you know, could be con like potentially competition beasts and get them to just go at each other and eliminate each other first. That's pretty brilliant. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I just, it, it's tough, man. You don't really know who to believe and everyone's lying to you. Like every time I had a, a conversation with Derek F and I love the dude, but he'd just lie every moment he could. And I already knew the actual truth. So I would just be asking him to see if he keep lying, just keep lying, keep lying, keep lying. Even that vote to keep Travis, we all knew it was him. Frenchie told us it was him, right? I'm in the, in the storage room with him. And I'm like, you know, we got to talk about this, these two votes because it looks like it, if, if people were trying to frame me and Derek X. Um, and Derek F proceeds to be like, this is stupid. We shouldn't be having this conversation. I'll just take the blame for the votes if it makes everyone happy. I'm like, dude, this is big brother. Who the hell takes blame for something that they're going to do? I was like, you clearly did it, just own up to it. I already know you did it, but the fact that you're willing to take the blame to try to keep peace, but you're actually just lying the whole time. Yeah. To me, it was just like, dude, you're not fooling anyone. And he's very transparent. And there are a lot of people, that's why he's, he's making as far as possible too. You know, he, he cooks, he's funny and he's transparent and he doesn't, he's not really a, a threat in any type of competition for him. So, yeah. um, but unfortunately, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Love the guy. Love the guy. Not, I mean, I'm just saying in general, yeah, yeah. that's more the reason why people are stringing him along. It's like, okay, we know if you're just lying to us or not, and we know you're not going right. to beat me out, you know? Not so, a threat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's either, because there's either, everyone lying is lying at Big Brother. There's either good liars or there's really bad liars. And mm -hmm. I guess he's just, he's just more of a really bad one. <laughs> <laughs> but he is awesome. He is an awesome individual. He really is. He's mm -hmm. such a great guy. So here's a funny, here's a kind of an interesting question. Based on your time in the house, who do you think was like the best liar in the house from your point of view? The best liar, I would say Alyssa. Alyssa? Really? Alyssa. I was really close with Alyssa. I was very close yeah. with her. And obviously, I knew um, the romance was blooming between her and Christian. So I respected that as far as like, you know, she's going to have a final two with him. She's going to have a lot of loyalty to him. I'm not naive to think she wouldn't. I just wanted to make a final two with her just to kind of solidify, hopefully, if one of the people on the mafia that was supposed to give me a vote went rogue again because Kylan and Derek X have both done that in the past, already tried to target me. At least I would have that vote to cover. But she was really, really good at lying. And me and Christian were just having a conversation on the phone the other day about like how good of an actress she really is. Mm -hmm. um, she wasn't acting towards Christian at all, but more right. or less with me um and i was like yeah I, there's a few times where i was like i can pretty much pick up who's just lying and you know who's not really the story is not matching and such it's kind of easy when you're around on 24 7 yeah but since she was always with her team especially being on slop the first week and, and being in the have not room and everything it was harder to kind of catch her you know, doing and saying the opposite or not sticking mm -hmm. with the story because she was always hanging out with Christian and, and she would come back and hang out with me or whatever it may be. I would say she was the, the, the toughest to try to tell because she would actually like, like she was in on the whole plan of, and this is a perfect example. She was in on the whole plan of everyone blindsiding me. You know, she cried after the DR room, I was told because she knew like, it's kind of fucked because I really trust her. And, um, but when I said that Christian slipped up in the bathroom, she sold that so well, like she looked, she was pissed, but now it makes sense that she was pissed too, because they really were blindsiding me, uh, mm -hmm. and going against me. So I guess it could have been a genuine pissed, but to me, I was like, she was really mad at Christian for not like, for saying that accidentally and not voting to keep me after she came to me to make the radicals in the bathroom. So I believe that. And turns out <laughs> it was, you know, it was all a lie anyway, but. Yeah. Um, Crazy. Yeah. yeah. Alyssa, that's surprising. Cause Alyssa, 
I feel like, yeah, I feel like in the first few weeks, she, I could, I thought she was really smart. Like she seemed like a really smart person and like a good player at the game, but towards like the later weeks, they haven't really, they didn't really show that much of her really. Honestly, she kind of like fell to the back. She, she, um, she's an amazing person and she's super funny. She really is. Um, as far as the game goes, I can't really talk about that because I don't really know as far as I, uh, we didn't really talk if she was like a big fan of the show, if she any, had any type of stra- uh, strategy. She kind of like got blindsided when Frenchie put her up just because Christian, the very first couple of days, was really liked right. her. He, he fancied her as soon as he saw her. You know, he picked her on the team, was in the bathroom saying, you know, I really like Alyssa. Alyssa is someone I can see myself dating. She's who I would date outside of the house. He made it very well known that he fancied her, which was kind of a mistake on his part because if he wasn't, uh, saved by that wild card he would have went home you know he would have been nominated with her and it's unfortunate because she was nominated through association when she was nominated through association she was devastated her paranoia was through the roof but she didn't show it kylan showed it but she kept cool calm and collected even though inside she just and she was on slop the first week the girl was a mess so um (laughs) so you don't really know what's like going through her mind just because she's she knows that like Kylan's doing everything that he shouldn't be doing and making a case for himself to go home. Mm -hmm. So she was just like, let that be, let him keep doing that because Kylan was going around the house and he was really, really paranoid. I've never seen paranoia like that in my life. To be (laughs) completely honest, It was worried some, like he really was like, he would be asking everyone over and over and over again, like, you know, do you have your vote? You know, it was just a lot. And, um, it was my first time really experiencing that and just the, the difference between him and Alyssa. So I don't know if I could really tell if Alyssa was a mastermind of the game just because she was blindsided too in the beginning and had to go into defense mode and had to just mm-hmm. kind of hope for the best. Um, and then, you know, obviously I got eliminated the week three. Second week, nothing really happened because we knew Frenchie was going to go home. He just <laughs> made too much problems. So it was tough for me to really dictate whether Alyssa uh, was a mastermind or not, just because we already knew Frenchie was going home that second week. So there's not really anything. That was a very calm week for a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, this, is, this is easy. I mean, we know who we're voting. You know? yeah, I was so sad when Alyssa got evicted. I, I loved her. <laughs> she was like one of my favorites. Yeah, he's a blast. We had a lot of laughs. We had a lot of laughs. So let's say, okay, so it's week three. And instead of you going home, Brittany goes home somehow. Let's just say that happens. Yes. Um, and let's say you won that HOH that night. Yes. Who would you think your targets would have been? For oh, that I already know. Dude, this is easy. I already <laughs> had the game plan in a perfect world. If I was able to win that uh, veto, then win the HOH, I would have took Xavier and Christian, put them up as nominee- nominees. I would have looked Xavier right in his windows, the windows of his soul, and said to him, I am going to do what you couldn't. And that is tell you, like a man that you are the target. Ooh, and I would have looked at Christian. I would have looked at Christian. And I said, Christian, you are up here because I need you to win that veto for yourself, not save yourself and Xavier. But I will tell you, if Xavier is still on that block with you, you will most likely be the one that's going home because it he was just winning too much at that time. So I would have said both of that. It would have been really juicy. It would have been awesome. Yeah. And it would have been like the perfect scenario because Xavier nominated me, but pleaded that I was just a pawn. Um, yeah. I had the whole thing planned out. I really did. <laughs> I wish that would have happened. <laughs> that yeah. sounds entertaining. Yeah, I, as, soon as, as soon as he did that, the radicals were nothing to me. It was right. all saving face and just pretending like I was cool with uh, Xavier and, and the radicals. Um, Xavier as a person, love the dude. Legit want him to win, right? Oh, yeah. But just at that point in time it was like i can never trust you again because there's a saying in big brother whoever you put on the block you're you're willing to lose that's Mm -hmm. what it is no one up there is someone that you're not willing to to lose so um it would have just the damage was done there was no way to repair it so i just had to keep pretending keep saying like you know let's put this behind us i forgave Derek x for what he did i can forgive you just trying to make it look like I was just this naive person that kept giving out trust, but I would have nominated him and got all the blood on my hands. I wouldn't have cared as soon as I won HOH, you know? Yeah. 
That's cool. Yeah, I, I think I have to agree. I think I would be targeting Xavier too because he's just yeah. obviously like the height, like probably the best player in there uh, that's left. Yeah. I was I was going to ask you who who you wanted to win, but you said you, you wanted Xavier to win. So it, it bounced around a lot. I really wanted myself to win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <makes> sense. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then I wanted Derek X to win. Um, yeah. Just because Derek X, I felt like he was playing a great game. Uh, I mean, he's going – he's a shoe win for um, – America's favorite player. Like he, he fits that description. He's going to absolutely get all the votes imaginable for America's favorite player. But um, I could understand why, you know, he was going to get blindsided. I mean, I mean, I backdoored. I just, I could understand it. Mm -hmm. Um, It was unfortunate because it was more or less done from Sarah Beth. And I felt like, she really didn't have a – she should have just went after Hannah like she's been wanting to go after Hannah. Like, it really wasn't something that I felt like she had to do because, yes, Derek X grown to make that whole little speech about a Nicole F game, and then he was. But he was already nominated at that point, so therefore he's going to have stronger feelings to getting rid of Sarah Beth if he stayed. Yeah, um, yeah. But I feel like he was just getting backdoored because he backdoored Christian. But Christian – I mean, now is the best play for Derek X to do because sure. Derek X was his Christian's target since day one. Like Alyssa and Christian were very vocal about getting rid of Derek X from mm. week one. So I was like, it just, he knows that. I've told him that it's, it's something that he knew, like it's going to happen if I don't make the first move. And Christian went on record after he got evicted saying, if he didn't do, if I should have just did it first because it is who does it first. And he wanted to do it. He just wanted to see if he could make jury first before he did it um and then after obviously um Derek X uh got uh blindsided I was like you know Xavier's playing the best game I think personally and the only way I thought Tiffany would win over him in a final two was if she did exactly what she had mm-hmm. to do by getting rid of Claire I was like this kind of solidifies that she's willing to do anything and everything to get that seven hundred fifty thousand dollars because that's yeah. her closest friend yeah. And I was like, that would, if she could squeak by, because her being greedy on that HOH um, really did kind of screw her, her personal game, because no one trusted her at that point. Mm-hmm. But I was like, if she's able to squeak by and still, you know, not get eliminated from, uh, you know, the double eviction night, and she made it to final two, I mean, how can you, she won back-to-back HOHs, she's won competitions, she was the whole mastermind behind the cookout, right? She came up with a whole brilliant plan. plan executed it perfectly and she even got rid of her best friend when shit hit the fan because she needed to to protect the cookout and the plan that she put in place i mean how do you say no that she doesn't deserve to win that but now that she's gone xavier there's no one that has a case against xavier yeah and And imagine if she imagine if she had evicted xavier too that would have that would have been she would definitely really i didn't understand why they didn't take a stab because I understand that you wanted the final six to be the right. cookout. I understood that, but it's just, like, you have to go off their track record. They kept winning all prior. You know what I mean? They're going to continue to win. And that's what they did. Kylan and Xavier keep winning these HOHs and you know, they're making moves that they need to make. Yep. And now everyone's going crazy all over the internet. But yep. Yeah. Tiffany really should have took that shot. I think she should have too. Xavier. Get yeah. rid of one of them, you know? Yeah. Because we all – we all right, so this is the, the problem with the game. Is it does come down to girl versus guy at, at one point. It really does. It's just the way it, it happens. And one thing that we were worried about in the beginning of the game was that three guys went home the first three weeks. I was mm-hmm. like, if the girls wanted to, it could just be all the girls versus the rest of the guys, and we don't have the votes regardless. Like, we will keep losing the, the guys. It could have turned into that. And it usually ends up does turning into that. That's why I was so gun ho about putting up a girl um, the week that I was going home because there was f- French kisses, that all girl alliance that was being brewed up. I was like, if this is a real thing, which historically has happened before, there's been all girl alliances. It's like it could really, you know, they could run the whole house and get rid of everyone. Yeah. I was like, you have to be kind of w- watching out for that. And then what happened? Final six, the three guys. Derek, Kylan, and Xavier working together. Hannah knew that because it's just a natural thing that happens in the game. 
you know? Yeah, that's, yeah that, that's the one flaw with Tiffany's plan. I, think, I, I don't think she planned for them three to turn against the other three girls. Yeah. Yeah, because they were planning on doing the same exact thing, though, right? Yeah. Right. So, like, Hannah wanted all the girls to stick together. So did Tiffany. Mm-hmm. And it, it's just a natural thing that happens. And it's whoever takes that first shot. Yeah. So if Tiffany wanted to solidify being able to make it far, all she had to do was put up uh, Xavier and Kylan, kept Claire, because Claire would have been able to give her the votes she needed. And then, bam, now it's all the girls versus, what, Big D and one other dude. And then, you know, the rest is history. You have the votes yeah. every time. Yep. So do you think that um, Ozzy will go home this week and it'll be all the final three guys at the cookout? I don't think so. No? I mean, I, I do think, like, uh, I think Big D realizes, well, hopefully he realizes that – if he gets rid of Kai, he can't beat Kai in a final two. Right. Right. But he, and he can't be any of them, to be honest. Aza has an HOH over him regardless. Mm-hmm. So no matter who he goes to, he's coming in second or third, regardless. He has that one vote. His, the smartest thing for him to do is, yeah, is to yeah. just get rid of Kylan. Get Kylan out. Um, because Aza would most definitely probably take Big D because she can beat Big D. Yeah. Um, Xavier is going to bring Big D. Because, I mean, he can easily – I mean, honestly, he might bring Aza. Xavier might bring Aza because they're very close. Mm. But in no world does it make sense to keep Kylan because Kylan's just a threat yeah. to all three of them. Yeah. He is. I think, you know I mean? yeah, I think, I think they're yeah. cutting Kylan for sure. Now, if he does get rid of Aza, if Big D does put that vote together, I'd be super – I'd be really shocked because that's his day one. Yeah. The Joker. The Joker. Yep. Mm-hmm. I mean, just – I'd be – unbelievably shocked and if he does do it it's just for the loyalty aspect but at the same time he feels like no one was loyal to him because that veto was used and he was put up and he honestly thought he was going home that's why he cried Mm -hmm. you know he thought he was like i mean there was a legit chance that i was just gonna go home well yeah Yeah. true all right so last couple questions yeah who is your uh who is your absolute favorite house guest in the house out of everyone out of everyone (laughs) <laughs> yeah all right this is biased though because i didn't really get to spend much time with them but travis okay yeah me and travis we really did like that last few days after he really truly showed himself man we we bonded like no other and then he got evicted and julie asked him who he was going to miss the most and then he said me um, <laughs> i'm not crying you're crying you know kind of <laughs> um you know it was very sweet of him uh we did. We really did. We just, we just vibed. But I also was super close with Alyssa. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was super close. I was decently close with Derek X, too. As much as we had, like, a, like a very turbulent first week, we had so many laughs. Like, if you watch the live feeds, we just laughed about nonsense, like, hysterically, <laughs> to the point where our stomachs hurt. Yeah. You know? And you can't really, those, those bonds, you know, it's like we just went off the stupidest little story in our head and the laugh and just kept going and going and going but did you guys watch the live feeds or no um we watched some of the live feeds usually like if the hohs went yeah. like past the live show we would watch okay. that and then like a little bit after but. Well, yeah there's a lot of shenanigans man there's a lot of sure but, yeah, um, Derek X is just that. something about Derek X is just super likable I don't, I don't even know what it is yeah He's Derek just, X is so likable he's just the most amazing, most genuine human being you've ever met. Yeah. And he's I think, funny and he's smart and he's, yeah. he's just, yeah. And yeah I think cook. that's the thing. He just comes across super genuine. Like he just he seems really, very real. He is. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's a great guy. He's, yeah. There's there's no way he doesn't win America's Favorite Player. Yeah, we were really sad whenever he got evicted that I week. I know. I was sending him all my BB books. I was like, Derek X, <laughs> Derek X, Derek X. He's making it rain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like Claire a lot, too. I wish Claire would have I did like Claire, too. I, Claire was great, too. I, I mean, I feel so bad for what happened to her. But I know. I was so sad. Yeah, she, yeah, it feels yeah. so safe, right, in that house. It feels so safe. And then, bam. That was a real blind side. That is yeah. That is rough yeah because yeah. being on the block is not fun it's I it's can't imagine people just don't want to be near you when you're on the block because they don't want to mm-hmm. be uh seen with this as association as far as like oh well you were buddy buddy with them so we're gonna put you up next week it's like yeah. when you're on the block you're like an outsider an yeah. outcast you That's really are yeah people isolate themselves from you just because 
they don't really want yeah. to have anyone being like oh you know are they trying to save that person it's wild it's a weird feeling i bet it is especially I- because all of us are all we're big personalities. We're used mm-hmm. to being the loudest person in our friend groups. We're used to being the most liked. We're used to being like, we're all like very big, big, you know, I, I want to say type A's, but some of them aren't type A's, but we're yeah. so used to just being the number one and then no one wants to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, that's got to you know, so <laughs> Like, what the hell? I'm experiencing <laughs> this for the first time on live TV. <laughs> right like, yeah you know, i don't think i could here. i don't think i could like mentally handle being in the big brother house i don't think i'd be very good there's, at it there's videos on youtube of me snoring um yeah it's, it's wild people would just watch you when you're showering everything oh yeah i could not do that no <laughs> so weird yeah all right man and lastly i think we already kind of talked about this but would you be down for coming on another season a big oh, brother dude season? absolutely man i have so much game that i would love to play and mm-hmm. i would love to be able to actually compete those memory comps man i don't I, i've been roasted in the house for saying this but it's i think it's more luck like I said, you're shown an image and there's so much information. Yeah. It's kind of whatever you look at last is what, and hoping that question that's random is going to ask you that. I don't really think there's much skill in that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's especially mm-hmm. the one for the HOH that my teammates threw. It's like, you're just looking at people, listening to people talk. You're looking at backgrounds and people's fanny packs, blah, 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 blah. And then there's a random question being like, what well, eye color was the dog in the bottom left? <laughs> it's like, how the hell, you know, are you supposed to have any type of skill with that? It's more or less whatever you looked at last and then the question. But everyone in the house would get all mad when I said that. I was like, I want to be able to control the, the, the variables, you know, yeah. the time and the speed I go and how, you know, fast I'm working and all that. I think, you know, with the chicken wire, I don't think people realize this in the chicken wire competition. There's a, there was a little ramp above it. All you had to do is just bring it up two inches and let it roll down a little ramp and you could have grabbed it on the other side. No oh. one knew that. Oh. You didn't have to go all the way up and there's a little ramp and no one used it. That's interesting. If you look back and look at it, all you had to do is just put it up two inches, let it roll down a little ramp and catch it on the other side and you were already at the hole. Well, wow. next time you play Big Brother. I was screaming it at the TV. I was like, you don't yeah. have to go all the way. Like, I yeah. didn't notice that. Me neither. I have to go yeah. back and look. Yeah, next time you no. play Big Brother, you'll be able to do that comp then. Yeah. 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 yeah, it was a yeah. Real, yeah. I hope we see you back on Big Brother because. Ooh, I, I would love to, and I appreciate yeah. you guys because um, it would be entertaining. Oh, yeah. It would be entertaining. <laughs> yeah, we thought you were going gonna to go really far. I really so did. I really did. I oh, no, appreciate you guys. I make, you made my day. <laughs> 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 thank you thank you for coming on our show yeah uh, thank you, you so much me. so much thank you of yeah, man. course uh, uh, can i do a little shout out to where they could find me of okay. course okay so i don't have much social media uh but if you would like to ask me questions get to know me a lot of people want to ask about becoming a flight attendant how to get on the show all that stuff my instagram is at fly with champagne um that's basically all i really have and then obviously shout outs and all that stuff for birthdays, anniversaries, if you want me to break up with your significant other, I have a cameo. That is basically just my name as well. Um, but yeah, I don't have a Twitter and I don't have anything else. So anyone, no blue check mark, it's not me. Just that's very important for people to realize because a lot of people are trying to pretend and say very controversial things. <laughs> and it's not Terrible. me. Yeah. People are mean. Wow. Yeah. People are mean. That's yeah. crazy. So fly with champagne is my Instagram handle. Great name. Love you. the name. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you everyone for listening and give us five star rating on Apple Podcasts. We really appreciate it. Follow us on the Rosie Recap on Instagram if you're not already. And that's a wrap for this episode of the Rosie Recap. Peace, Have a good one, guys. Thanks, Thanks Brent. <laughs> good day, guys.